Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemin TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hello everyone, welcome to today's edition of Azeng News. Afghan refugees in Indonesia are afraid when homeland is falling into darkness. After the Taliban seized the Afghan capital on Sunday, August 15, scenes of chaos in and around Kabul airport and people desperately trying to get out of the country after conflicts. Afghan refugee Aziz feel the familiar senses of desperation of his countrymen as he watched the events unfold. The situation is very dangerous for us, the Hazaras, because they don't like us. They think the Hazaras are not Afghans, because our features look like Chinese and Japanese, and they do not consider us as a native Afghans. Japan bukan orang Afghanistan asli. Decades of war in Afghanistan have driven millions of Afghans out of their landlocked homeland to neighboring countries over the years. Like many others, as his family fled to Iran when he was five, where he stayed until relocating to Indonesia seven years ago. The latest turmoil saw Taliban forces retake Afghanistan in lightning speed, as the United States and other foreign forces withdrew, leading to chaotic scenes at the airport with diplomats, foreign citizens and Afghans trying to flee, but they are being impeded by crowds and Taliban checkpoints. Even though Aziz is far away from their conflict, he still has family in Afghanistan. His worries are his family belong to the Hazar ethnic minority, who have for decades been targeted by militants, including the Taliban and Islamic State, for their ethnicity and religious beliefs, and this is an extra reason for worry. Most of the Hazar are Shiite Muslims, whom Sunni hardliners like the Taliban abhor, and the community has faced persecution and violence for decades, including recent attacks on a maternity hospital and a girls' school. Indonesia evacuates more than 20 citizens and urges the Taliban to uphold women's rights in the country. Indonesia evacuates 26 citizens from Afghanistan, where the hardline Islamist Taliban has seized power. A total of 26 Indonesian nationals have been evacuated and all of them are in good condition. According to our record, one diplomat is less so non-COVID and will be treated immediately. Other than Indonesian nationals, their five Filipinos were evacuated in this operation, based on their government's request. Untuk ikut diangkut dalam misi evakuasi Indonesia. During the briefing, Foreign Minister Reto Marsudi calls for an Afghan-led, Afghan-owned inclusive political process that will bring peace and stability in Afghanistan for women's right to be upheld. Indonesia, terus berharap proses politik yang... Indonesia hope an inclusive political process that in Afghan-led, Afghan-owned can still be carried out for the benefit of the people of Afghanistan. Indonesia also hope that the women's rights in Afghanistan be upheld and Indonesia is committed to help bring peace in Afghanistan especially through women empowerment Afghanistan terutama melalui kerjasama pemberdayaan perempuan Retno says another five Philippine nationals were evacuated on the military aircraft which landed in Kabul on August 20 the flight stayed at the airport for two hours instead of its 30-minute plan. She adds, Indonesia has moved its diplomatic mission in Kabul to Islamabad temporarily and will assess the situation in Afghanistan every day to determine the next step. More than 80,000 people have been evacuated in recent days from Kabul airport, where thousands of desperate Afghans clutching papers, children and some belongings trying to flee the country following the rapid Taliban takeover of key Afghan cities as the United States and other foreign troops withdrew. Manila residents disagree on the Philippine government decision to facilitate the blockage. 
people living in Manila have mixed feelings about the Philippines government's plans to further relax lockdown measures in the nation's capital and nearby provinces amid a record spike in the number of COVID-19 cases. On the 19th of August, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte had approved the easing of coronavirus curbs in the capital region from August 21 to 31. Restaurant manager Eli Kundangan hopes the East restrictions will help her restaurant recover after weeks of barely having any customers. Dr. Josephine Sabando says inside the Quezon City General Hospital, a chapel was converted into a makeshift COVID-19 ward with beds and oxygen tanks lined up in front of the altar as a response to the increasing demand for hospital beds. They also believe the economy is suffering, however, if it's possible to extend the ECQ, enhanced community quarantine, and will go for that. The Philippine Health Ministry reports 17,231 new coronavirus cases on a record high daily increase in cases and 317 fatalities. Also says, total confirmed infections in the Philippines have increased to more than 1.8 million, while deaths have reached 31,198. Kamal Harris visits Singapore amid established deeper ties with Southeast Asia. United States Vice President Kamala Harris arrives in Singapore on a trip aimed to building deeper ties with Southeast Asia comes under the shadow of Afghanistan's collapse, which has made allies question the credibility of United States foreign policy promises. Harris' trip aims to counter China's growing influence in Southeast Asia, a region Washington considered key to check in Chinese expansion. A senior White House official told Reuters this month that the vice president's focus will be on defending international rules in the South China Sea, strengthening United States regional leadership and expanding security cooperation. Harris, the second member of United States President Joe Biden's cabinet to visit Southeast Asian country, is welcomed by Singapore's Foreign Minister Vivian Vallakrishnan at the Salatar Airport. During her trip, Harris meets Singapore's President Halima Yaqub, Prime Minister Li Xiong Lung, and delivers remarks on a United States combat visit in Singapore. She also holds a meeting to discuss supply chain issues from the private sector and the government. Harris became the first United States Vice President that visit Vietnam. Thousands of migrant workers leave Ho Chi Minh City after the government extends the blockade for another month. Thousands of workers are leaving Ho Chi Minh City as coronavirus lockdown curbs were extended for another month. Vietnam was battling its worst outbreak yet, with business hub Ho Chi Minh City is facing over 200 deaths a day, being the epicenter. The state television VTV reports that many motorcyclists are stopped at barricades set up by authorities in an effort to stop people from traveling. In neighboring Binduong province, workers board buses and trains to leave the industrial city as they expect existing lockdown restrictions to also be extended. The province has the second highest number of cases in the country after Ho Chi Minh City reporting 2,500 infections. Many migrant workers in major cities had lost their jobs as Vietnam forced factories to shut down since late April amid the fourth wave of COVID-19, although the government has announced financial assistance packages. In the capital Hanoi, police are enforcing curbs and checking people's travel documents while restaurants and businesses remain closed. According to the government data, the death toll in Vietnam reached 5,744 with around 275,000 people infected as a third of the country remains under lockdown. Japan sends military aircraft to Afghanistan to bring back its citizens. Japan sent a military aircraft to Afghanistan to evacuate its citizens amid uncertainty in the country after the hardline Islamist Taliban seized power. The first jet, C-130, departed the country at Japan Air Self-Defense Force Iruma Air Base in Saitama Prefecture, west of Tokyo. Chief Cabinet Secretary Katsunobu Kato told a regular news conference earlier in the day a total of three military transport planes are expected to be sent to Afghanistan to repatriate not only Japanese citizens, but also Afghans working at the Japanese embassy or with Japanese missions. 
Numerous countries have been sending aircraft to bring back their citizens and some Afghans after the United States and other foreign countries, including Britain, brought in several thousand troops to manage the evacuations. Official says earlier Japan closed its Afghan embassy and evacuated the last 12 personnel, but a small number of Japanese nationals are still in Afghanistan. Japan warns severe impact of the South Korean core ruling on forced labor. Japan's chief cabinet secretary, Katsunobu Kato, warns of serious ramifications if a South Korean court's ruling against Mitsubishi heavy industries over forced colonial labor was enforced, urging for a more acceptable solution to be presented to Japan. A Mitsubishi Heavy Industries spokesperson declined to comment, saying the company tried to confirm details on the ruling. Japanese public broadcasters NHK reports that the court had ruled that around 850 million South Korean won or $730,000 worth of payments owed by South Korean companies to Mitsubishi Heavy Industries could be seized and used to compensate forced labor victims during Japan's colonial rule. The two countries have long been at odds over restitution for Koreans forced to work in Japanese firms and military brothels during Japan's 1910 and 1945 colonial rule of the Korean Peninsula. South Korea's Supreme Court in 2018 ordered Mitsubishi Heavy to compensate former forced workers from South Korea, setting a precedent and drawing a strong rebuke from Japan, which argues that the matter was settled under a 1965 treaty. Vietnam mobilizes army troops to help fight the COVID-19 outbreak in the country. Vietnam deploys soldiers to the streets of Ho Chi Minh City to help enforce a strict lockdown in the country's biggest urban area and the current epicenter of its worst coronavirus outbreak to date. Meanwhile, witnesses say soldiers are delivering food to residents of the city and images broadcasted by state media show armed soldiers manning checkpoints and checking documents. After managing to contain COVID-19 for much of last year, Vietnam has recorded a total of 348,000 infections and at least 8,277 fatalities. Most of those cases have been recorded in Ho Chi Minh City and its surrounding industrial provinces where the Delta variant of the virus has sent numbers soaring since late April. Vietnam implemented movement restrictions in Ho Chi Minh City in early July, but announced its harshest carbs yet last week as infections have continued to surge. Authorities say the enforcement of recent carbs not been sufficiently strict. The government says a tighter lockdown, prohibiting people from leaving their homes even for food, and says the military will step in to help. Just 1.8% of Vietnam's 98 million people have been fully vaccinated, one of the lowest rates in the region. Restaurant owner in Malaysia chooses not to reopen his restaurant despite the government loosening the rules amid soaring cases in the country. Some restaurant owners in Malaysia are choosing not to reopen their outlets for dine-in customers despite the government relaxing rules for fully vaccinated citizens. Malaysia announces it will allow some businesses and sectors to resume operations and ease restrictions for Malaysians who have had at least two doses of COVID-19 vaccine. However, cases in Southeast Asian country remain high, with record daily increases in infections reported for three days in a row this week. Malaysia has reported more than 1.5 million cases in total and has one of the highest per capita infection rates in the region. Chin Ren Yi, the owner of restaurant My Burger Lab, says, despite struggling during lockdowns, he did not feel comfortable about reopening his outlet to customers. He also raised concerns over flip-flopping policies, with the government having to backtrack on easing lockdowns following a surge in cases. Meanwhile, the Joloka restaurant owner says they would be happy to see customers even for a short while after a long period of extended lockdowns. At least 35% of the country's 32 million population are fully vaccinated, while more than half have received at least one dose. Hebelis is rapid progress in urban and rural development in North China.
North China's Hebei province keep forging ahead in the development of both rural and urban areas over recent years, bringing a new life to the permanent population of 74.61 million that dwells in the place spanning about 188,800 square kilometers. Chinese President Xi Jinping inspects a major forest farm in Chengde city of Hebei province, hearing reports on ecological conservation and forestry management and checking the growth of forest woods. However, ecological improvements are not the only achievements. The province has scored in the rapid socio-economic development of the province, which is the closest to the capital city of Beijing. It has registered more than 35 billion kilograms of annual food yielding for eight consecutive years, while local dairy production has topped the national list for seven years in a row. Along with the development of emerging industries, the province is taking an important role of supporting the country's high-quality opening up strategy. Moreover, last year, the average concentration of PM2.5 in the province was recorded to be merely 44.8 micrograms per cubic meter, nearly cut by half from the level of 74 micrograms per cubic meter in 2015. As the province that surrounds Beijing on all sides, Hebei also been working to bring the coordinated development of the Beijing-Tianjin-Hebei region to a next level. At the moment, Hebei's Zhangjiakou city has also completed the construction of all competition venues and matching facilities for the Beijing 2022 Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games and is now running rounds of tests as a warm-up. Well, thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a great weekend with your loved ones. See you!